smile Joshua Vergara The new version of Android is coming out. What do you think it'll be called? Well, I don't know. They're on P right now, so I think it would be- It doesn't matter what you think! The only thing that matters is your answer to this one question. Do you like... pie? Oh yeah, I love pie. Oh yeah? Well, let's, let's go get some. Yeah, totally. Uh, but install the new Android P. It is Pi, so install that on your Pixel before we go. Come on, let's go. Okay, I'll, I'll go install it, then we can go. Yeah, you know I got you. Come on, you smell what the rock is cooking. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Android 9 has officially arrived. Now, P now stands for Pi, and that's actually a little bit surprising to me. Okay, so clearly there was a lot of speculation as to what P would stand for, and I thought it was going to be Pancake. But for my people over in the Philippines, my Kababayan, why don't we all just agree that it should be called Old Boron? In any case, I've gone ahead and installed Android 9, Android Pi, on the Google Pixel 2 XL, and the update process was actually really easy. I did not use any of the betas up until this point, and after opting into the actual program, I was able to get the beta, the latest beta, installed, after which time I got an OTA that allowed me to install the full version of Android P. Now, from the beta, it only took like 50 megabytes to make it go from the beta version to what they deem the full version, but full version is actually the wrong way to talk about this. The reason why is this version of Android Pi still does not come with some of the features that were announced back at Google I.O., which is a little bit disheartening, but at least we get a more stable version of the operating system with the aesthetic that they're looking for, uh, and the features that are going to come will happen in the fall, uh, potentially around the release of the next Pixel is what I'm thinking. One of the aesthetic changes is of course going to be in the Easter egg. I tried tapping and tap and holding on it a bunch of times, nothing really happened. So you just get this psychedelic design right here. And depending on the colors, it could be kind of hypnotizing. So overall, it does look pretty cool, especially when the colors are cycling. One of the features that has not made it to this version of Android Pi just yet is the digital wellness dashboard, which shows you what applications you are, for the most part, addicted to, the ones that you use the most. And it also gives you some suggestions as to what to do in order to lower your amount of addiction with your digital content. I like where Android is going aesthetically, especially with these rounded corners and this card motif, which is becoming basically the design choice for all of Android, especially on a system level. You not only have the notifications here and when you tap on any of them, I like how it expands <laughs> from there and goes straight into the application. That's a nice touch. And a lot of the animations look really nice as well. The cards are of course what you got from Google Now and it's still over on the left side. And you'll notice that I have this dark motif behind everything, including in the app drawer here. Uh, and it's another aesthetic change that was kind of introduced in our current version of Android, Android O. But now, if you go down here to the advanced area in display, you can go to the device theme and it no longer has to be changed based upon what color your wallpaper is. After all, my wallpaper is predominantly red, so it's not going to change. According to that, I made it forced to stay dark. One thing that gave me a little bit of pause was the new recent app screen. Now, the reason why is because it looks a little bit too much like the iOS one. I understand that there might be full screen gestures coming to Android Pie, um, and uh, when that does happen, I'll give my reactions to it, but this looks up here, at least in this upper two thirds, looks a lot like the iOS recent app screen where everything is a large card, and it's not that easy to get a quick snapshot of the last, let's say, three to five apps that you've been using. And going one by one with each one, it's not quite as convenient as I would like compared to uh, the Rolodex that we have right now. The couple of elements that are down here I actually really like, uh, because on a system level, you should be getting these no matter what version of Android you're using. Uh, so if you have a version of Android in a Samsung phone or an LG phone that is updated at least to Android Pie in the back end, you should be getting this in your recent app screen. It gives you easy access not only to a search bar, but also to the same line that is found at the top of the app drawer. So it gives you some easy access to five of your most used applications. The last few things that I'll comment on are more about subtle changes in where certain elements are located. Now, if we go to the volume rocker, you can press up and down and all of the sliders and buttons that you would normally have to reach to the top for are right next to the volume rocker. I think this is pretty awesome, especially the fact that you can hit this icon and change what the ring mode is. And one final thing is this shortcut that allows you to turn off the ringer, put it into vibrate or to silent mode by just hitting the power and volume up 
keys. You just press them together and it goes straight to a vibrate mode and that little haptic feedback lets you know that you did it for sure. So if you have the phone on a table and you don't want to disturb anybody, you can just reach over, hit those two buttons and you're good to go. And then of course, there's another feature that everybody knows about, the smart rotate button. If you have portrait locked on the phone and you move to landscape, uh, this little icon will show up in the nav bar so you can hit it and easily go to landscape without having to bring down the notification shade, unlock it, move it over, lock it, stuff like that. It's just a lot more convenient and it actually shows that they're trying to be a bit smarter and a bit more subtle with the powerful features that you're looking for. Now, if you've been using the betas for Android P up until now, then these features are probably not all that new to you. They are new to me though, because I don't like going into the beta programs uh, that often when it comes to full versions of Android. I would prefer to wait for the full version of Android to come out and then be able to be surprised by it a little bit more. Um, and I'd prefer not to be too much of a bug tester in that sense. So with that said, I like where Android is going, at least aesthetically. You can let me know what you think. I know that some people don't like those rounded corners in particular, but I think that's a bit nitpicky, especially considering Google has been wanting to make cards a thing across all of Android. Uh, but really, it's each their own. You can let me know what you think about Android Pie's aesthetic and also its different features in the comments down below. If you have upgraded to Android Pie on your Pixel or any of the supported devices, also let me know about that as well, and we can start a discussion about how we feel about this latest version so far. Consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already and hit that bell on the side if you want to keep up with all the different types of content that I do here because I do a bunch of things here at JV. Uh, from there, get into the comment sections like I said and drop some likes on these videos and just let me know what you think in general. I hope you enjoyed that sketch at the beginning so maybe we'll see more of that in the future when I feel like I want to have some fun with stuff like this. Uh, but until the next video, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one and remind you to enjoy your tea everybody.